let's check out this channel. Wow, awesome. Why chemical engineering is great, why it's the best job to have, why chemical engineering is awesome, why chemical engineers will save the world. What? This is very positive content. I want to know the truth, the raw truth. Let's check it out. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Remember that in this channel, we talk about chemical and process engineering for both students and professionals. So click on the notification bell and get notified each time I get a video out. Now, I know that this channel is kind of positive or very looking forward towards chemical engineering. But to be honest, chemical engineering is not only rainbows and sunshines. It's also about things that you're going to be suffering or things that you're not going to enjoy that much. Or at least to say, you will not be looking forward to. So let's check out these things that I really think that must be addressed to the chemical engineering community. So number one will be, yes, you guessed it, the market, the job market is not that nice, especially for recent graduates. To be honest, getting back to the idea, I would say especially for young engineers. The job market is very looking forward for very experienced uh, engineers that have been working 5, 10, 20, 30 years in a specific area. There's a lot of need for those. But if we're talking about recent grads or maybe young engineers with maybe one to two, three, maybe even five years that have just got out of university, uh, they may not be looking so forward towards getting a great job. You will most likely need to apply a lot of jobs. You will most likely need to send a lot of CVs, resumes all over the internet to many companies, to many areas, call, email a lot of people, maybe even go to LinkedIn, connect with random people, start talking, create your network, and eventually maybe land three, four, five interviews of jobs that you are not maybe that looking forward. And not only that, guys, you will most likely be competing with a lot of people and eventually getting an offer Maybe if you're lucky, two offers and having like one, two, three days to decide whether or not that will be your first job. So definitely the job market, not the best for you right now. This second idea is kind of funny or not funny. It could be even kind of dramatical or sad that there are a lot of chemical engineers that will not be using their skills in their jobs. Meaning that you studied maybe for unit operations, you studied for automation, you studied for process control, you studied for everything of a chemical plant, and eventually you are in technical sales, selling a product that has most likely nothing to do with chemical engineering, or maybe you are a project engineer and you're most likely just working in ensuring that the people is working towards the same goal, nothing of technical skills whatsoever. So actually there's kind of a joke, or actually not a joke, a fact that we run around between my friends and colleagues, and it's that we don't even remember how to divide a digit of three numbers by a digit of two. If we had to do it by ourselves, we will be like totally out, like what a shame being an engineer and not knowing how to perform such operation. But that's the truth. Many times you will go directly to the spreadsheet, to Excel or so, be working with numbers, don't really do that much of mathematics, but still you're kind of working in that engineering side. But many other times you will not be using anything that you learned in university. And for that, I think it's kind of sad, but at the same time, kind of awesome that if there's a lot of people that didn't enjoy university, you still have your time. This idea is kind of similar in the sense that we are not using our skills or our set of knowledge from university because the curriculum or the syllabus or the courses we take in university are not updated. So yes, you know, we're talking about machine learning, we're talking about artificial intelligence, we're talking about asset performance management tools, we're talking about project engineering, very awesome things. And you go back to your university and there's nothing at all on this. There's a little bit of automation, maybe connecting the PLC or so, but there's nothing very interesting on that. One of the things that I really found kind of awesome and at the same time scary was that my teacher was telling me that it was exactly the same book, exactly the same problems and exactly the same solutions that I was getting. So meaning that the cycle repeats 
And it, it kind of looked like uh, it was great because, I don't know, like this eternal thing that is going to happen forever. Chemical engineering is the same set of technologies, the same set of skills that will allow other chemical engineers go through time. But I really think that the world is at a very quick pace and we cannot only stick to what it worked back in the 50s, 60s or 70s. One concept I really think is one of the hardest is starting your own business in something related towards chemical engineering. So of course you can imagine a lot of these crazy ideas of starting your own chemical product or starting a chemical plant or going to consultancy or I don't know, something related towards chemical engineering. But to be honest, all the skills that we learned are intended for the use of huge chemical complexes huge chemical plants that are already working or maybe you're going to start up or you have the capital investments. But there's no, let's say, this little spark on how do we start a business related with chemical engineering. Because of course we know, yes, we can go for a detergent, but there are a lot of companies with much more technologies that will have better detergent. Or maybe you want to go towards making your lubricant for your car. Well, there's of course a lot of companies working towards that. They perform a lot of tests, they have a lot of knowledge, they actually have the best recipe for that lubricant. And of course adding all the factors of the technical requirements, the safety requirements, the environmental requirements and all that. So it's kind of hard for you starting on that. In the other hand, I have friends from food engineering, I have friends from accounting, I have law friends, I have med students, I have also dentistry students that they will just go and straightforward open their own business pretty easy. Uh, in the food side, you may create some food, something that you will eat that you can sell in little markets or maybe go bio or organic and they will produce. Or if you're talking about the consultancy, you have medical doctors, you have dentists and so on. Or if we're talking about law, accounting, well, they just open shop. So easy. But for a chemical engineer, it's kind of hard to say just, okay, here's my refinery. Let me get started with my fuel production. Okay, this is one that might be obvious to many of you guys, but it wasn't that obvious to me back in the day. And is that there's a lot of companies, great companies, great chemical complexes, great technologies, great processes, producing awesome products, but they are far away. They are very, very far. And not only that, they may be far away, but okay, still near a city. Sometimes you will be in middle of nowhere, like the nearest town, which is maybe 2000 people, will be three hours from you. Or you will go literally on open seas, or you will go to very remote areas and well, maybe you just want to keep going on with your life and still live in the city. Uh, I don't know, that's kind of, my guess, but really it will be great to know that chemical companies are really far away, so consider that. So this idea may be on discussion, but I really think that most chemical companies are very traditional. They work in very, let's say, old ways or old school ways. They are not looking forward to be the most disruptive uh, or innovative companies. They are just looking forward to get the job done. That's it, of course. And that's, of course, something that you may want to consider. If you think of yourself of someone very nobody that wants to always be on the edge of innovation, creating new products or researching something and feeling free to make your own decisions, well, maybe chemical companies are not the best decision for you. Of course, there's a lot of chemical engineers that go into other type of companies that allow them to do so, and that's great. But there's also this chunk of companies that will not allow you to do so. They have a structure on how junior engineers should operate, how senior engineers should operate, how the manager of the operation should operate, and how the director of the company should do stuff. One of the things I really hate from chemical engineering is that people don't know about it. So they don't know how fuels are produced, they don't know the importance of chemical engineering in their life, they don't know what a chemical engineer does, they will typically confuse you with a chemist in a lab or so. So it's something that really at the beginning is not that bad, but eventually it starts to get nagging a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more until you just explode and you're just sad that people in our society may not respect that much the chemical engineer. This idea is gold, especially when you're a young high school student that you want to change the world, you're an idealist and you want to clean the world, you will be the guy that goes into green energy, you will be converting technologies into more efficient use of materials, or more proficient and so on, and eventually end up in one of the most pollutant companies in the world. 
So it's kind of sad how the idealist guy that wanted to save the world ends up in a not so nice environment. You get pushed decision by decision into these type of companies, maybe because of the money, you need to pay loan, so you go for it. And whenever you realize you are just the very thing that you swear to destroy. So this idea is kind of new. It's something that I have seen in the latest uh, years, maybe last two years or so. And it is that uh, you may end up working as a operator, which of course is nothing bad at all, but you started for chemical engineering. You wanted to work and transfer processes. You wanted to do engineering job. And because of the job market is kind of shitty, you ended up doing a technician role or maybe a operator's role, which is not that into engineering. And please don't get me wrong, I'm not meaning that this is lower quality work or that you're superior or so, but I just mean that if you're willing to spend three, four, five years studying a degree and spend a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort and end up into a job that maybe you didn't uh, want it or maybe imagine for, um, is something definitely that you may want to consider in your decision. This idea is towards the way we teach, the way we learn, the structure of society, university and all that. But it's kind of funny for me guys to see that there's a lot of professors, they know a lot of theory, but unfortunately they never went to the industry. So they're talking about process engineering stuff, they're talking about unit operations, they're talking about a heat exchanger maybe, they're talking about distillation, they're talking about starting up some uh, chemical plant or maybe shutting down or what will happen when electricity is gone and all that. But all this is from theory or not from first-hand knowledge. And I really think that uh, universities need to get more into the side of getting more actual engineers that have gone to the field that know a little bit more into the actual things that happen. And of course, we need the part, the theoretical part that allows us to understand the skills, the concepts, the theory, calculations, all that. But it will be great to have more actual process engineers. But unfortunately, I know that most process engineers will either stick into the industry or go into consultancy. This is, in my opinion, the worst of all. So once you graduated, you are Jon Snow. You know nothing. And it's kind of funny in the sense that you spent three to four years studying chemical engineering and you cannot do chemical engineering. You cannot go into a chemical plant and take any role. You need special training for that. And I really think it's kind of funny in the sense that, well, you study a lot of time, three, four, five years, and still you cannot go directly to a chemical plant and start operating. Definitely a huge gap between academia and the industry. So actually, if you want to read more, I will be adding a link to a blog post from Sean Moran. He really takes a nice position on stating why you are not a chemical engineer once you graduated from chemical engineering. So it's a pretty quick read, check it out. And I'm pretty sure that you will get something of value in return. And yeah, well, those are some reasons I really think that a lot of chemical engineers will not talk about, or especially from high ranking to lower ranking engineers, maybe they will not show that much. They will tell you that you are complaining of the site being far away, or maybe you should know more from the training, or maybe that everyone studied the same topics in university. There's a lot of reasons that they could tell you, but this is sincerely from myself to other chemical engineers. These are the things that I really hate the most in chemical engineering. On my behalf, that will be it guys. I'll see you in the next video.